the sun. Merciless ruler of certain lands and all those that inhabit them. Light, heat, drought. The sun decides who will live and who will die. Plants and animals can only survive here thanks to special adaptations to the harsh conditions dictated by the sun, the terrain, and the climate. Drought, heat, the sun's dominating, unrelenting presence, all have shaped these landscapes where only the strongest will prosper. Here, surrounded by rocks, beaten by unyielding solar rays, beset by a severe lack of water, unique forests grow. Only the most well-adapted can survive the rigors and demands of the Kingdom of the Sun. Off the East African coast, more than 400 kilometers out to sea, lies the fourth largest island on Earth, Madagascar. In the center and northwest of the island are found the forests of the sun, the Madagascan dry deciduous forests. The central region of Madagascar is scattered with rocky outcrops of awe-inspiring dimensions. The dry deciduous forest rises up from the coast to an altitude of 800 meters. In the wet season, it receives a moderate amount of rain. But during the dry season, it becomes an arid and inhospitable desert. The only way to get through such times is to turn yourself off, to shed your leaves and wait for the water to return several months later. To survive here, you have to be the best adapted, like reptiles that can withstand the long droughts Tough birds that can tolerate the scarcity of water. And lemurs that feed on tough, fibrous plants. While there's moisture, the ground is covered with greenery. This is the principal territory of the ring-tailed lemur. The early morning holds no fears for this species. Ring-tailed lemurs sit, facing the sun, soaking up the first rays and warmth of day, in attitudes reminiscent of devotion. In fact, Madagascan tribes once thought that these lemurs literally worshipped the sun. Mm. 
The forest that the ring-tailed lemurs inhabit is extraordinary. About 90% of the tree species here are endemic and are found nowhere else on the planet. The harshness of this desiccated environment has led to the evolution of highly resistant plants, especially adapted to this dry and rocky environment. Ring-tailed lemurs can locate more than 30 different species of plants among the rocks, eating their leaves, fruits and bark. And this is one of a few species of lemur that will even eat grasses. While climatic conditions are favourable, life here is pleasant. That is, if there's no danger around. Kites circle above the forest, on the lookout for young who stray too far from the clan. This group of lemurs is on alert. Apart from the kite overhead, a snake is on the move at their feet. But although it seems they face a double danger, in fact, large boas are the only snakes that pose them any real threat. Still, it's best to leave as soon as possible into the protection of the forest canopy. Providing food and shelter to a multitude of animals, the forest that grows amongst the rocks is a strange ecosystem. An area of dense underbrush and of trees reaching 20 meters in height. And now they're at their greenest. This is a paradise for lizards. Here they find both protection and abundant food. But not everything that moves is edible. The bright colors of the rainbow grasshopper warn that it is extremely poisonous. When threatened, it will also raise its wings, another warning that it is a far from tasty snack. Chameleons are also content in this warm and fertile forest. They have food aplenty. Chameleons know all about the colourful grasshoppers, a 
and let them pass by untroubled. These grasshoppers feed on poisonous plants, storing the vegetable toxins which they use to protect themselves against predators. Nobody dare attack them, even when, during the throes of intercourse, they are at their most vulnerable. Neither the hungriest chameleons, nor these powerful and desperately hungry crows will eat them. A pair of pied crows digs among the litter and soil of the deciduous forest floor. These birds will feed on all kinds of food sources. Right now, they're stocking up on protein in the form of insects and seeds, which they store in their powerful beaks. Nearby, a hedgehog tenrec, similar to the European hedgehog, is also looking for proteins on the forest floor. His excellent sense of smell guides him to food. Like most tenrecs, his favorite are the worms that are found in abundance in the soil, which is now soft with moisture. But when the soil is hard and dry, the hunt for worms and insects becomes much more complicated. Even the chameleons will occasionally come down from the branches on dangerously slow excursions to explore new territories. The crows are well aware of the importance of seizing the moment to take advantage of the wealth of food. If they spot the chameleon, his adventure will be over straight away. But for the moment, he is safe. The pied crows have built their nest in the highest branches. Their chicks are growing quickly and their nutritional needs are hard to meet. During this period, the parents, united by a close link, will search the spacious forest for food hour after hour. Meanwhile, the chameleon's perilous adventure seems to be reaching its goal. Western Madagascar's deciduous forest has an irregular shape, following the canyons through which small rivers flow, taking refuge in the humidity and the protection they offer. In these oases of water, shade and food, the forest remains resplendently green and vibrant all year round. These secluded forests shelter life from the sun that mercilessly bakes the rest of the island. Any unprotected leaves will dry out and will be lost. Hidden away in the canyons, the trees provide food and shelter for a wide range of fauna.
small birds build their nests in the network of branches of this dry forest. Apert's tetraca is a strange bird. It lives only in the semi-arid environments of Zombice. And like 51% of Malagasy birds, it is unique to the island. These small, secret woods provide ring-tailed lemurs with a range of delicious fruits. Now they're looking for the first ripe figs. Keeping an eye on the sky above, they can relax for the moment. Not everything which flies overhead poses a danger. Flying foxes take the night shift among the fruit eaters. During the day, they hang upside down in large trees. Boisterous colonies can number in their hundreds. Flying foxes feed on fruit and their juice and are exceptional seed dispersers. They are vital elements in the propagation of the dry forest. breeding season, and under their wings, protecting them from the aggressive sunlight, mothers hide their single cub. The cubs will cling to their mother's body day and night for four or five months. And now, following the rains, mothers carry their offspring to eat in the blossoming trees. It is the most critical moment of their lives. Kites and crows often harass them until they lose hold of their cubs and drop them. This little one was dropped in full flight. Its fate is sealed. It calls out to its mother continuously and plaintively, but she cannot rescue it. She is physically incapable of landing on the ground. And so its small body will contribute to the fertilization of the forest soil. The intense life of the forest has not a single moment's respite. The interior of these canyons is a permanent oasis and shelter from the sun. Insects enjoy the sap of trees, their leaves and fruits. This is the beginning of an energy chain that the praying mantis knows how to take full advantage of.
This diminutive but impressive predator can destroy the chitin exoskeleton of insects as large as itself and consume them entirely. And after a meal, what could be better than a relaxing wash to remove any remnants of food? This careful cleaning ritual is essential for praying mantis. It also seems to be a pleasurable experience in which the insect invests its full attention. meaning it is entirely unaware of the danger it is in. The hunter becomes the hunted, and the mantis ends up being a crunchy snack for a giant Madagascar chameleon, happy to replenish the energy it has spent during its hazardous sortie into new territories. The energy chain of the forest is tapped into directly by various animals. What appear to be fruit or flowers on this tree are in fact bugs. Pink Madagascar cicadas, once again an exclusive species to this region. The deciduous trees of the forest are pierced by thousands of small styluses that suck their thick sap. The combination of abundant food and the gregarious habits of animals lead to exciting scenarios that end in tiny orgies. The forest's nocturnal neighbors are patient witnesses to the insatiable toing and froing of the small creatures that roam everywhere. It is not yet their time. That will come when night falls. This owl waits expectantly intently listening to the sounds around it. Although it may still be daylight, she will not let an opportunity for an early breakfast pass. The ring-tailed lemurs are active, and after feeding on the forest's abundance, they will return the favor. They're responsible for eating many leaves of the trees and disperse its seeds. But now they're going to do something extraordinary. The ring-tailed lemur, the most terrestrial of all lemurs, spends a third of its life on the ground, especially to travel. At dusk, they come out of the deciduous forest. They have discovered a tasty and crunchy snack. Bugs.
These are the most omnivorous of lemurs. When the forest begins to dry out and leaves and fruits are in short supply, they will eat insect larvae, spiders and grasshoppers, and even birds and chameleons. But they have never before been filmed eating bugs. After their snack, and before the cold of night arrives, they take in the last rays of sun. They sit with the sensitive parts of their bodies to the light and bathe in the last warmth of the day. Madagascar's deciduous forests resist the merciless onslaught of the sun. This is a unique ecosystem inhabited by a diverse range of plants and animals adapted to the heat and drought, capable of surviving in the ever-changing and relentless kingdom of the sun. <laughs>